Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy Jack here at the Irish Hotspur, and this is your preview for Tottenham's Premier League away match against Nottingham Forest at the City Ground. We'll be talking about the tactics, taking a look at the key battles, taking a look at how Spurs will be setting up against Forest as well as how Forest will be setting up against Spurs. But before we get into it, don't forget to smash that like button if you do enjoy these previews. And then as well, get your score prediction into the comments, everybody. I do want to see how you're thinking Spurs will get into this because this should be a convincing win for us. But then again, maybe actually Forrest have, you know, a trick up their sleeve here because we are going to talk about the cold hard facts. The cold hard facts often do give maybe the opposition side, you know, a bit more respect here. And the beginning, you know, of the cold hard facts sort of does suggest that, you know, Nottingham Forest have actually been quite exceptional at home, everybody. When you do take a look at that first one with Nottingham Forest having won their last eight home league games at the city ground, their best run since 2009. So we are coming up against the best four side of a decent amount of uh, time. And then as well, Forest have only conceded seven in their last 16 home matches keeping 10 clean sheets in the process. So clearly they're a much better side at home than probably most people would like to give them credit for. And then as well, uh, I must say when it comes to that middle, you know, kind of cold hard fact that you're certainly able to read there, clearly another good chance for Spurs to be able to start the season on a high note. If we're able to get four matches unbeaten, that certainly would show that Spurs are definitely, you know, serious business this uh, coming season. But everybody, enough of the cold hard facts. Let's move into what else we know we have to talk about. And that has to do with the head to head. And with the head to head, we're talking about Steve Cooper against Antonio Conte. And there really isn't much of a history actually between Steve Cooper and Antonio Conte. In fact, you know, Antonio Conte's record against Forrest, he's only played one match against them in his whole career. And then as well, you know, this is pretty much Antonio's Conte, uh, Antonio Conte's first match against Steve Cooper, as well as Steve Cooper's, you know, first match against Spurs, you know, as well. So when you do look at this, you know, it is kind of, you know, a bunch of firsts, you know, in this case, especially I would say, you know, for Nottingham Forest here. But you know, if you did want to know about if you're kind of, you know, a trivia, maybe for a pub quiz or something, if you did want to know about the last five fixtures, uh, that 3-1 win was in 2014 in the FA Cup. That uh, that 3-0 win away from home was actually in the 2005 FA Cup fixture, followed by the 1-1 draw, which was at home, which was a 2005 FA Cup fixture. That 1-0 win away from home was in 1999. And then that 2-0 uh, uh, win away from home was, uh, uh, I believe, or sorry, actually that 1-0 away from home was in 1999 against Forrest at the city ground. Then the 1998 win, uh, excuse me, was actually at home, the 2-0 win. So there you go. Those are the last five fixtures, you know, a separation of at least six years, you know, in most cases, you know, when we're looking at, you know, each time we played them. So not really good history to probably base ourselves off when we do look at it, but still interesting nonetheless, I must say. And Steve Cooper, his first time, you know, he's coming up against a big, you know, uh, big manager you could say when it comes to the team news not really a whole lot probably the first thing that we do have to talk about is that you know actually uh oliver skip is available and he probably you know might not have a ton of you know uh minutes under his belt probably not even might not even be a full match fitness but he is you know actually going to be available i would at least reckon he probably might make the bench at least i hope he does uh, but Christian Romero, everybody, looks like we did make these graphics ahead of time, but Christian Romero is going to be un, uh, or unlikely to start. He's going to be basically rested for this one. It looks like the injury isn't too serious, but Spurs seem to be prioritizing him for that game against West Ham, which certainly makes sense, I must say. But let's take a, maybe, uh, take a look at Forrest, you know, team news, at least their injuries. A big one is actually their new center back, who they paid, you know, a bit of money for, you know, from Mainz. Uh, Niakate, he is out with a thigh injury. He will be out actually for a considerable amount of months, at least according to Steve Cooper. But I did speak to a Forest fan, and he said it actually could be less than that. But nonetheless, he will not be available, as well as Omar Richards, their new kind of left wing back signing from Bayern Munich. Very, very talented player. I think he came originally, you know, from Reading, but he will not be available either. So they will have to stick with Harry Toffolo, you know, their new sort of, uh, or I'm not sure if he's new, but at least, you know, probably not the preferred left wing back option, but he might not be a bad player. I'm not too aware of him, but let's maybe talk about how Forrest attack, you know, talk about, you know, their sort of tactics, you know, I'm going to let, you know, the, the, the animation go alongside me while I sort of kind of explain, you know, maybe how Forrest do like to attack, how they sort of do like to play when it comes to that, there are going to be a back five, you know, sort of team. They're going to be looking to hit us on the counter attack, probably a back three, you know, uh, going forward, but again, very defensively solid. So they will be looking to counter attack in plenty of, uh, uh, situations. 
When you do look at teams that have been newly promoted, the back five, the back three has been a very successful formula in the past. You look at Sheffield United, you know, you look at the likes as well of Brentford. Those are two very good examples of teams that found a way to survive as well as be very good as, you know, sort of back five teams in the Premier League. Uh, They're a very defensive team that do emphasize counterattacks. Lingard has been excellent in the past leading counterattacks for West Ham. Expect Forrest to find Lingard at any opportunity to get a counter going. They do have two good, hardworking strikers. They have Brennan Johnson, of course, underrated underrated striker, who was one of their best players last season in the championship. He'll run through those channels, drag the center backs and defenders out of position. Do not sleep on him. You can even see that in the beginning of that animation, of course, is Brennan Johnson sort of leading, you know, the counterattack, making those, you know, runs into spaces that do drag defenders out of position. Taiwo Aiwani, you know, the new player from Union Berlin, he's a big, powerful striker. And, you know, Union Berlin, despite, you know, being a German team, are probably more similar, you know, to Burnley, you know, than maybe most German teams. They're a very defensive team. They like the long ball up to the strikers. He is a good forward who is probably quite comfortable, you know, adjusting, you know, to the Premier League because he is playing for a defensive team. He is playing for a counterattacking side, which is quite similar, I think, to what he had over at Union Berlin. I expect that signing to do quite well. Their wingbacks are used for creativity. Last season, it was Jets Mentz, as we probably know, was their source of creativity out wide in those wingback positions. Now it is weak Nico Williams, who they did pay a bit of coin for. Uh, they will get the ball out wide to those wingbacks, especially Nico Williams. In those one-on-one situations, they back Nico Williams to be able to take it past his man, put in a good ball, put in a good delivery to create something from there. Uh, but that is sort of, you know, the essence, I must say, of Forrest, you know, attack. I think, you know, while the animation was going, sort of kind of, you know, describing all the different, you know, avenues or all the different ways they sort of attack. When it comes to their defense, I'm actually, you know, pretty much just going to be- break this down, you know, maybe frame by frame. Uh, but maybe I'll actually start from the beginning here, you know, just to be a bit kinder. But when we look at, you know, maybe how Forrest attack, this first First animation is maybe, you know, sort of, you know, suggesting how they might come after us, you know, in the beginning of the game. I expect them maybe to be a bit higher up the pitch, probably pressing us a little bit in the beginning. Then maybe 15, 20 minutes in, I expect them to probably sit in a much deeper shape. But if this is the first 15 minutes of the game, I could see it going this way. They put a bit of pressure on Dyer with those two strikers. Don't make that pass into Bentacore easy. We love that pass in Bentacore, but they're being man-marked by Lingard there. They then go back to Lloris, cycle back to Hoiberg, who likes to drop deep when we need maybe a bit of a relief from Dyer as well as, you know, Davies. Uh, Hoiberg gives it out wide to Davies. Davies doesn't really have a lot of options, plays that sort of, you know, pass into Perisic. Perisic tries to go for a one-time pass into Sonny. They're able to intercept it with Nico Williams as well as their center back, sort of leads to a counterattack from there, and then they're able to score. Nico Williams does actually believe have some of the most shots in that team, so it's not a surprise to see him probably a bit further forward, you know, than your average wingback. But if they were to, you know, press us in the first 15 to 20 minutes, I think this animation sort of kind of suggests how they might set up if they were to do that. I expect them to actually come after us with a ton of energy. Uh, in the first 15 to 20 minutes. But let's maybe look at, you know, how they probably normally would set up, or at least for the, you know, the rest of the game, you could say after that 15, 20 minutes, this is how I anticipate them setting up. They will be probably a bit, you know, deeper. They will, you know, be looking to probably intercept the ball in midfield, take the ball from us, you know, in those positions where they can lead counterattacks. Like I said earlier, I think Jesse Lingard is probably, you know, their main, you know, sort of, you know, threat on those counterattacks. He's excellent at, you know, being able to carry the ball. He's excellent at making, you know, runs through the midfield here. What they basically take advantage of is, you know, again, you know, that pass from Ben Davies or that pass from Perisic, you know, into, you know, a player like Sonny or Kane, you know, dropping deep. Their new signing, Mangala, is able to intercept. They get it quickly, you know, to Nico Williams, who plays the first time, you know, to Brennan Johnson, who finds Lingard. Lingard is able to then lead the counterattack through and then be able to eventually pass it along to Taiwo Awania. So basically, you know, the main themes here, as you can tell, they are going to be a very counterattacking side. Then again, though, they will work very hard. They have two very, you know, hardworking strikers in Brennan Johnson, as well as Taiwo Awani. Uh, Lingard, you know, has done very well, you know, in pressing, you know, so they have a hardworking team to Despite probably conceding a lot of possession to us, maybe after the first 20 minutes, I do anticipate them to work very hard, especially when they get those counterattacking opportunities. But let's maybe take a look at how Spurs will attack in this game. Spurs, I think, have a variety of ways they'll go about it. But when I wanted to look at this animation, I kind of wanted to maybe talk about, you know, maybe what I've noticed, at least, you know, from Spurs. And maybe I'll drag it back here, actually. So we're, you know, trying to be realistic. And often, you know, we'll find ourselves with, you know, Sanchez playing it back to Dyer in this, you know, position. Once it goes back to Dyer, 
What I've noticed is that, you know, Pierre Mahoyberg will actually drop deep to be able to play alongside Dyer. It seems like, you know, a big change Antonio Conte has made is instead of maybe Dyer expected to make, you know, really good pass from these kind of uh, central positions, you know, in the back line, he's maybe added Hoyberg alongside because Hoyberg is actually, you know, believe it or not, quite good at maybe playing passes from the deep areas. He has played a few clever balls over the top, you know, last season. So maybe Antonio Conte backs Hoyberg in case Dyer needs a bit of help to be able to receive the ball under pressure, especially if there are two strikers, as you can see in the animation you know coming against him there Hoybear can play it to Bentecourt he could try to swing it to Davies here instead you know he does play it to Bentecourt Bentecourt plays it first time to Sun who then is able to first time it as well you know kind of as a layoff to Ben Davies another sort of you know uh, thing that I've noticed we're kind of combining a lot of things at once here you know that pass that Bentecourt receives from Hoybear is quite common Hoybear drops deep you know, to then force Ben Davies out wide. You can see it in the animation there, basically. With Hoyberg dropping deep, sort of then, you know, means he's taking Ben Davies' position. He then forces Ben Davies out wide in sort of a good way. Once we play through the middle, you know, Bentecourt will still occupy that middle space because someone needs to occupy it. Then Sonny actually drops deep. By Sonny dropping deep, he's able to link play with Ben Davies there. Ben Davies there, once he receives the ball, is able to carry it forward. And this is something we've seen lots of times, Ben Davies, you know, carrying it forward in these kind of underlapping or, in, you know, kind of uh, inverted runs, as you could say. He's then able to find Perisic, we know will be an excellent option, you know, in these overlapping runs on the wide. And then from there, you know, Perisic is probably one of the only players, I think, in those wing back positions in the world that can do whatever he wants with a cut inside on his right and go in on his left, put in a cross. In this case, I'm going to say he actually comes in on his right, finds finds Kulusevsky at the top of the box there to be able to, you know, hit it in. So I'm going to play this animation one more time for you just because I think it's a pretty sexy goal, you know, by Spurs that I was able to come up with. And I was trying to combine a lot of sort of, you know, things that, you know, I've noticed at least with how Spurs, you know, build up, how Spurs, you know, like to, you know, build out from the back because I do anticipate us to have lots of possession, everybody. So this is sort of how I see Spurs scoring. But let's maybe talk about how Spurs will defend in this game. And, you know, like I said, you know, plenty of, you know, I, I, I anticipate at least a bit more possession than we're used to. So it's kind of hard to see how Spurs will really set up because will we really be camped in our own half for a lot of the game? I don't really think so, at least not as much as Wolves. So I guess, you know, the animation that I came up with here is sort of, you know, maybe Spurs, you know, keeping that same shape, you know, that sort of, you know, 5-4-1 shape. But... They are trying to, you know, pounce on those, you know, passes into the midfield. Sanchez playing that sort of Romero role, trying to step up, you know, on the forward, you know, receiving the pass there, able to get it to Emerson. Emerson gets it into the important player being Harry Kane, who then finds what every teammate is making that run in behind. But like I said, you know, Spurs, I do anticipate at least after the 20th minute to have plenty of the ball. I'd be disappointed if we didn't. And then so it seems kind of unrealistic to show, you know, kind of Spurs' defense, you know, when we're kind of camped in, when we're sort of, you know, struggling to make amends. But let me know what you think, you know, this spurt up that animation there. Let's take a look at, you know, uh, as well, uh, the danger man in this game, the danger man, you know, for Nottingham Forest. I anticipate it being actually Nico Williams. Nico Williams was probably one of their most, you know, kind of uh, their best player, at least I could say, from what I was able to gather from SofaScore, from what I was able to gather from FB Ref. It seems like Nico Williams has been used sort of as like the best, you know, kind of option, at least when it comes to creativity. Uh, I feel like he has been a good signing for them. But then again, you know, if we saw Jet Spence, you know, kind of produce a lot from this sort of position, it seems like the right wing back is a very creative position in Steve Cooper's side. So with Nico Williams, again, you know, being basically one of the best players according to Sofa Score and match ratings as well as being one of the most creative players, most shots taken, key passes, a pass that leads to a shot on goal, as well as crosses into the penalty area and players dribble pass. He's essentially doing it all, you know, down that right flank. So certainly see him if, uh, if they are struggling or even if they're doing well as sort of the guy they go to when they need creativity or when they need, you know, a bit of danger. Uh, but when it comes to the key man for Spurs, the key man for Spurs for this one for me is certainly going to be Kulisevsky. I think Kulisevsky needs to, it's not like he really needs to step up, but I think he maybe needs to take the burden, you know, off of players like, you know, Kane and Son. I think Kane, you know, has done well in scoring for us. You know, Sonny might be a bit out of the form, but we do expect him to come back into it. So we need to rely maybe on our third, you know, kind of, you know, I would say close to world class, you know, forward being Kulisevsky. While some teams maybe can find it difficult to handle Son and Kane I think it's probably near impossible to handle all three of them so we do need Kulusevsky 
to step up in this one. He can take on his man and spin him and be able to lead counterattacks when he receives the ball deep, but kind of like Sonny does, he is able to turn his man. He is able to, you know, uh, cause danger. And then as well, he has exceptional delivery from those wide areas. You know, when we see Emerson kind of come inside, he plays it out wide to Kulusevsky. Kulusevsky plays a dangerous ball, you know, into the box. And then as well, he is showing, you know, plenty of players the weight room this season compared to most wingers who are, you know, probably a bit pacier, like to knock it past their man. I feel like Kulusevsky is, you know, that guy that likes to, you know, really, you know, show his, you know, defender the weight room, you know, really likes to, you know, skin him, but then, you know, kind of seal him as well, if you know what I mean by that. So there you are, everybody. Those are kind of my thoughts on the danger man for Nottingham Forest being Nico Williams. And then for Spurs, it would be Kulisevsky. But let's take a look at the key battles. The key battles for this one are going to be in the beginning, Nico Williams versus Sonny. Nico Williams, while being probably their most, you know, attacking wingback, is going to have to focus on Sonny and realize that Sonny is going to be a danger man and is someone that will be looking to score. Taiwo Aonia, very, fa- very fast, very strong, you know, coming up against Dyer, I think will be an interesting test. I do rate him as a striker and he has done, a, you know, decently for them. So we'll see how he handles them. Uh, Jesse Lingard will be that extra man in the midfield. If Spurs line up with a 3-4-3, we will probably be outnumbered in the midfield. How will Lingard, you know, cause, you know, the midfield problems, not only, you know, with his pressing, but also when he's on the ball. Hoiberg will need to be responsible for him if you ask me then last but not least it is going to be an interesting kind of thing duo town you know down the left flank uh it's going to be harry toffolo with scott mckenna i'm not really too sure how good those guys are again i'm not a bit expert on forest but i feel like you know kulisevsky and emerson they really should you know have a good game here because we're going to need them you know to step up because i think you know forest's right hand side is a bit stronger and that means then kulisevsky and emerson are going to need to kind of carry the burden at least when it comes to the creativity front this game but there it is everybody that is the stats with jack do let me know what you think of this one i've really enjoyed you know kind of covering forest a team that i'm not really too much of an expert on so everybody do let me know in the comments what you think of forest maybe what parts i've probably missed maybe as well you know maybe parts i missed out for spurs but everybody on your way out do smash that like button as well feel free as well you know to let me know you know your score predictions let me know you know anything again i missed you know tactically with forest feel free to support the channel with the super thanks if you do really enjoy these previews and if you really do enjoy stats with jack but as always and for now i will be seeing you come on you spurs and conte we trust